took me a Report, while. Report, new 4.7 inch iPhone launching in March. The little iPhone, the cheap iPhone, the iPhone for everyone. As far as Tim Cook is concerned, of course this thing's been rumored for a while. What's it going to be called? What are they going to do with it? Is it? It's the old one, but it's the new one, but it's the one that everybody wants because they don't want to spend $1,000, at least some people. That's the premise here. Touch ID makes a comeback. You're unlocking with your fingerprint a novel idea in 2015. But it's coming back because some people still want it. And I guess uh, from a cost-effectiveness perspective for a budget phone, it should be fine for a lot of people. Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Bloomborg. I don't, I don't know which publication it was. They're competing pu publications. Yeah. Bloomborg sounds really interesting, though. By uh, Detroit Borg. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like Bloomberg, but it's only reporting on robotics. <laughs> and really fringe futuristic uh, stuff. Uh. It is a sister site to Bloomberg. Bloomborg. Think about it. See what I'm saying here? Uh, but this was Bloomberg, unfortunately. They reported that Apple's suppliers are gearing up to begin mass production of a new 4.7-inch iPhone. This work is going to be split between Hanhai Precision Industry, Pegatron Corp., and Wistron Corp. Those are the type of companies you do a business with when you're in the billions, Will. The corpse? Yeah, they all got corpse, and they all got names like Pegatron and Wistron. Yeah. All the Trons is what you get for your billions of dollars. The 4.7-inch touchscreen will employ Touch ID built into the home button. These are all rumors, but it seems pretty evident at this point. A lot of things pointing in this direction. And this will, of course, be an alternative to using Apple's facial recognition stuff, the face ID stuff that we've been dealing with since the iPhone 10. Mm -hmm. Can I just say something, Will? Quick little side note. I've been using an iPhone, iPhone uh, Pro Max 11, Pro Max. Still don't feel comfortable saying all of that together. Mm. One day I'll be comfortable. Battery life has been incredible. Apple, I got to give them a pat on the back. Yeah, what are you getting there? I don't know. I never, uh, some nights I didn't even charge it over the past few days. Oh. I just charge in the car a little bit here and there. I mean, I haven't looked at the screen on time or anything like that, but just anecdotally speaking, I have to say, having switched from the Pixel 4 XL to this in the past week or so, I was amazed at the hmm. battery life on this thing. I'm just way less tethered. Hmm. And it means, that, anyway. That's not what this show is about. It's just a little side note to put in there. Oh. People want to know. Do people want to hear a few words every so often? All right, Will, get it straight. So you're getting paid by Tim Cook too? Yeah, exactly. Okay. People need to hear some words every so often. Yeah. Words are good. Every so often. Yeah. You only, you only words 24-7. No. It's just noise at that point. Mmm. And it becomes static. Mmm. We're having a time today, Will. <laughs> Lovely. So this thing's going to be a lot like the previous generation uh, iPhone 8. Apparently taking a lot of, who knows, it probably recycled a lot of recycled parts from the iPhone 8. Not that there's anything wrong with that. A lot of people like the iPhone 8, use the iPhone 8, or still hanging on to the iPhone 8. So if you can offer people a budget option, they can use all their favorite iOS apps and Apple-specific stuff like iMessage and so forth, in 2020 for a budget price i'm all for it now what is the price going to be there's a rumor it'll be around 399 could be less of course it could battle with other budget devices like the a series stuff from google with the pixel i think it's going to be popular anyways because i think there is well we know for a fact there's a lot of people holding on to their old iphones mm -hmm. just because the new upgrade price is bananas to get a flagship level. And so maybe they're sitting there on an iPhone 7, let's say, waiting. You even see people on a 6S. Mm. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. People are using a 6S. And so now maybe with this lower price point option, you're going to get some people upgrading. And presumably you're going to get a quicker phone. And yeah, it won't be the screen-to-body ratio of 2020. 
And I'm not going to make the argument it's going to be your best value because you're going to probably be able to get some better specs. But if you need to be inside of that iOS ecosystem, as some people do now in March, you're going to have a better entry point from a cost perspective. 4.7 inch. Plus, some people might just want a small phone because no phones are small anymore. Right. The, the budget iPhone 11, plain 11, is still a big phone. In fact, it's bigger than the non-Max Pro. You know, I've handled these phones, Will. I've touched them. Yeah. I'm aware. Phones are big in 2020. 